the auto link, we, we called it out too, like you got auto linked off the top of the stage and now your entire momentum has swung. And Big Mac, everything you said that was wrong with his play started happening right after that. His punish game got worse, his follow-ups got worse, he was taking stupid risks off stage, and he got punished for almost all of them. Yeah, if he played like he did in game one through all the games, it might be a completely different story, but in the end, we're moving on to loser semifinals, and this is gonna be Mario Fox. No DLC to be seen here. This is a classic matchup. This is a very classic matchup. Um, Dan, getting out there with the, the, um, the forward air, Right after Snoopwolf started with a little bit of a comma that we weren't able to discuss and we were still kind of in momentum from the last set. There wasn't a lot of time. These guys went straight into it. Dan gets that mentality when he loses a set and goes into losers. He doesn't want to wait around. He doesn't want to think. He doesn't want to button check. He sits down and he plays. And that's just who he is. So there was almost no time in between. And now suddenly, you know, we're a minute. Oh, <laughs> jab reset forward smash. That is not a classic setup for that jab reset. You don't expect it. Mario to be jab resetting people at like 100 plus percent, but if you miss that tech at any point in time, even if it's not a typical Mario labbed reset opportunity, you're going to pay the price, and that's exactly what happened. Excellent awareness for Dan to convert. But now Fox has the stage and he's using that superior movement speed on the ground to just not let Mario back down, but Mario finds one opportunity to get in, gets a little bit of grab. This is going to be a combo. Ooh, okay, excellent convert coming out. And now the tech chase continues. I love that read at the edge Ooh. there from Dan, but he's gonna pay for it. Yeah, he paid for it real hard. He had a great read off the edge, but then he whiffed, I believe, a grab. And Snuffle was just ready for it with the forward smash, and now Dan has to kind of deal with that. And see, that this is you know, what we were talking about in the, from the last set. You know, when your punish game is not tight, when you misspace small moves and they punish you heavily, this whole game isn't even about neutral exchanges like is the misconception. This whole game is punish game. When you read what somebody else is going to do, how hard you punish them, how well you are able to kill them, that's the whole game. That's how Dan lost his first stock, and that's why Snoofle's even back in this game, despite Dan playing excellently other than that one mishap. Snoofle had the perfect punish waiting. Both these characters have insane punish games. You can see that happening right now. Nice turnaround up tilt to get this combo started. Oh, okay, looking for that Nair. I think he was looking for a more horizontal knockback to do another reset into a disadvantage situation. But that bear, really quick coming out from Dan. That's going to buy him time. And the ledge. But now another shield stare down between these two. That down tilt unsafe from Snoofle. And this is scary at the edge. But Fox Illusion, very good at sneaking past the portly Mario. Yeah, and Mario getting back there, he's going to finish the stock out, and Snoofle is going to take game one. The most unfortunate thing in Mario's game is when you grab somebody at those high percentages and you know that back throw won't kill, then you're just like, uh, down throw? Uh, pizza pie up throw? Throw you off stage because? Like, you can't follow up off of it. Like, Dan went for the down throw, and Snoofle was just like, see ya, see ya, nerd, and he came right back, and the back air sealing out the stock. That's probably the weakest part of Mario's game, and why he is, like, not considered a top character as much anymore. Like, there's other ways to beat Mario, but that's really rough, because that just means shielding against Mario heavily can wind up punishing him late game, even if he gets the right read on you. But well, you can see at this mid percent range, Mario can have very strong burst options at forward smash, already sending Snoofle very far. Yeah, and the take smash, that's, Yep, 106%, almost entirely unanswered. But here comes Fox, putting Mario at the ledge. And now, where's Mario gonna go? He's kind of stuck here for a little bit. Look at Fox go, this dash attack, so good at catching Mario. He doesn't have too much aerial drift to get out of the situation. And that Smashville platform kind of running away, not helping Mario out at all. Now Snoo it was, it was Snoofle's turn after that combo. Now these guys are even again. This is very similar to the second stock of last game, where it looked like Dan was in a commanding lead. The next thing you know, Snoofle comes flying back. Dan Ooh. missing the back air and conceding stage control, but Snoofle goes for that forward smash punish again, and Dan learning from last game, ready for it. Shield into up smash, taking stock from him. Snoofle went for that forward smash, thinking neutral getup, and he thought it. The neutral getup was there. The timing was just off by like only a few frames. It was really tight. Snoofle almost had the KO, but instead it's going to turn right around. And you see, he's not even showing fear of that uh, forward smash at the ledge. He went for it one more time. But now instead, Dan's going to get this punish, and he had an air dodge right where he wanted it. Instead, grab coming out, thinking Fox would fall a little bit faster than he did. 
Again, able to land and not wind up losing a stock in that situation. But, well, he's still on his first stock, so he has quite the lead here. And Snoofle, unfortunately, hasn't been able to close the stock out despite winning a couple of transactions there throughout. Up tilt, once again, not quite going to kill. Dan able to land again. The down tilt! What? Oh, what? Okay. What world is this? Whose mans what? is this? There was one game I played where I killed someone with Yoshi's forward tilts, and that's that's the same thing. It's like a huh <laughs> kind of reaction. And I think Dan made the exact same noise over the Snoople in between. But just let it rip, dude. Charge that stuff for as long as you need. Fox is like short hop. You know what's a good way to eat a short hop? Uh, the cinder block hiding under Mario's hat. He's had that cinder block there for 30 years. That's like the Plus. equivalent to people who fight by holding a roll of quarters in their fist before they throw a punch. <laughs> like, okay, Mario, we get it. Your head is hard. It's my laundry money. Now, nowadays, people are like, oh, yeah, Mario reaches up and punches the, the question mark blocks. I'll always maintain he just headbutted it. The hand is fraudulent. It's the helmet all day. He has the hand... When he does the up smash animation here, he has the hand behind his head. He goes... Three years forward with it. But we can talk semantics some other time. We're on Final Destination. Yeah, game three. Both these guys in neutral, trying to figure out which one of them can keep the momentum going. Dan had a great finish last game. Only took 10% of the second stock when the game was over. So Snoofle coming back and stealing that first game. Now, if I love the way Dan uses forward smashes in a lot of these matchups. I, I, I want to call it the Mitsurugi forward smash. Because in Soul Calibur, Mitsurugi has this move where he takes a big step backwards, and then you think he's going to be where he's standing, but instead he steps back, and then he rears forward and hits you with the sword. That's how Dan's using the crouch box on this Mario F smash, and it's so good at baiting people to run in for a dash grab, and then instead you just get eaten by the fireball. Yeah, Dan also has been using forward smash pretty much across the board as his like go-to punish option for a lot of people. He's been doing down throws in the forward smash, cross-ups in the forward smash. Mm. A lot less going for dunks, a lot less up smashes when he doesn't need to. So he's just been looking cleaner across the board in the last couple of months. Oh, Although, but perfectly that, spacing for the box illusion. Yeah, that wasn't even like fishing. He knew Snoofle was going to go for a side B, and he spaced it the entire time. Almost instantaneously, as he saw the animation, he walked forward and threw out the up smash. Yeah, he wasn't even fishing for it. He was, he was like, I'm walking forward. I can turn around anytime I want if he doesn't do Fox Illusion. But if he does it, I'm right here. This is perfectly timed. Excellent stock awareness from Dan. But, okay, that dare to up smash the classic Fox Guild confirm. We'll find the mark. I think that's the first time he was able to get a significant punish off that down air this entire set, though. Yeah, now suddenly the game is even. Dan didn't get a whole lot of extra credit. And Snoople got a little bit of a combo as he res or as Dan respawned and wasn't able to capitalize. So oh, that dash got... attack. Mm. There's the forward smash again. Not even a cross-up, just a call-out. That Mario dash attack, that was definitely a walk-forward jab that turned into one. That would have been game. That's definitely... This is now Dan's game to lose. Even though he is far ahead, okay, and he will seal the deal. Good to see that happen. Good to see the composure there from Dan after he missed a potential kill confirm at the edge. Emoji Dan's game? Dan's game. Dan's game. He's going to go up 2-1. to one. Not like this. <laughs> Dan looking very confident on the final destination. And you know, it's interesting because Snoople's the one who took away the platforms. But I think Fox does incredibly well on stages like Battlefield here, where he can just carry Mario away and away. But it's Dan who has taken the edge without any platforms. Now we're going to go right back to Final Destination, see if Snoople continues to play the aggressive game that he's playing. Or maybe we see a little bit of that, uh, the Ruins Fox of B -B 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 -B, which we've seen a little bit of early on here. Dan loves it when people play aggressive. He loves it when people approach him. You see his anti-approach game with the forward smashes and the pivot grabs and up smashes in those kill situations. It's just been a phenomenal play, but right now we've got the Snoofle Show, big 77% on the board so far off of a couple of up tilts to up airs. But that one whiffs, and this is Mario's punish right back. All right, these guys staying even. Snoofle playing for his life here. Dan has one game to play with, but he'd like to put away Snoople right now, put Fox past him, and get his run back with Big Mac and Loser's Finals. Snoople not going down quietly. Sometimes when people are playing for their lives, they play with panic, and panic's a scary thing to play against. It makes people unpredictable. That's the runes combo, forward throw the lasers. Uh, that's absolutely confirmed damage. You gotta take that. 
But Snoople gonna get back here off the stage, but nice wall jump mix up there. The forward smash though is a little antsy. You know, That's we gonna get a punish. You know we haven't seen from Dan at all? The cape. Oh, we've seen it lightly at the ledge, but not really in any situations where you could get craziness off of it. Well, like earlier on a second ago when we were talking, Snoople had started the side B, but he was just like Dan standing on ledge, the cape would have hit him and he would have side beat the wrong way and died. Or probably died. Fox can make it back from that with the, with the yeah. Fox uh, upbeat. Yeah, Firefox. I, keep, I keep forgetting Firefox is the most protected move in the history of the game. But that's not protected from the up smash there. That is a good stop coming out from Dan, and he was able to turn that disadvantage spot into an advantage. Again, that forward smash missing. Oh. But this time, Snoofle not looking for the forward smash. He gets the up smash. Landing back air into up smash, covering all the options. Yeah, with the re-grab, gets double up tilt. It's crazy combo. Oh, and he was just trying to end Snoofle's career, not just his evening. Good on Snoofle to avoid that. That was obviously the max reward punish that could have happened in that situation. Yeah, the max reward um, getaway that can happen for you by not getting hit by that is the I didn't show up on a highlight reel video. <laughs> oh, they're turned around. Oh, I think that was just a... a kind of accidental pivot coming out from Snoofle. And he's gonna pay for it with a forward smash. That's Dan moving on. He wants his rematch with Big Mac. And he got it. Yeah, Snoofle accidentally pivoted. Dan was ready for it and threw out the close hit of forward smash. And Snoofle wasn't expecting that either, so the DI was off and he just instant died. I don't. I think if the DI was right there, he doesn't even die from that. But he was DIing the wrong direction because he had already pivoted. He tried. So when you pivot that direction, you're already trying to jostle your joystick back to the left and when your character doesn't turn, I think for most foxes, the automatic input is to try to do the pivot again, so you hit right and then left, and he hit right as he got forward smash, so the DI sends him straight into the blast zone. 